What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Mainframe Defenders, the Meltdown Edition. Uh, this is kind of a sandboxy strategy game in which you will take like a party of mechs, you will equip them all with customizable goodies and add-ons and weapons and things of that nature, and then you will run missions that will give you resources and things of that nature to continue upgrading until you can do that no longer. I'm a big fan of anything that like includes battle tech or like battle mechs or like mech warrior or like drones or anything else inside the core gameplay values and so hey I'm excited to check this one out here today so let's play the first 30 minutes or so we'll see if it's the type of game that you wanted to add to your wish list or if it's a game that you would rather pass on let's go all right so we've got a squad here We'll go with the game difficulty we'll put it on we'll put it on normal I can't be playing my first impressions of the game on very easy that's not a good look. Uh, let's see here, we've got the Atlas. The Atlas apparently has a ray gun that does 20 to 22 damage, uses 3 AP, and then causes it to heat up. So this guy runs kind of hot. Uh, he's also got a heavy reactor, which means that he's got an extra AP, but he's got less heat retention, so he's going to overheat a lot easier. We have the Brigandine, which is armed with a auto cannon that does 7 to 9 damage three times, costs 2 AP, generates a lot of heat, However, this guy has armored plating, which means that every single hit that he takes is going to be flat reduced by six. Let's add him to the squad. He sounds like a pretty good play. Uh, we also have the mechanic over here. It's got a needler. Apparently, it ignores armor, generates a little bit of heat, applies internal damage, which I guess deals 25% of max health as damage every turn, ignoring armor. Wow, it's actually pretty disgusting. And then repair kits right here so that this machine can repair the hull of other robots. All right, so we'll take that right there. We've got the paladin on this side who's got a broadsword and a bio steel frame that's going to give a four second move range, but it's going to lower the. So this guy hits really, really hard, but he's super fragile. Okay. And then we've got the acid cannon over here on the Viper. Apparently, it generates a ton of heat, but it puts corrosion on the enemy which will cause them to melt every single turn. It also adds interference, which reduces the damage of their weapons, so kind of like a debuffer, I guess. Our, our real choice is going to come down to, I do want the Paladin. Our choice is going to come down to, do we want the Atlas, or do we want the Viper? The Viper's pretty cool. It has sort of a Warlock style of gameplay, if you take my meaning from World of Warcraft, that may add up to something good in the future. However, the Atlas is just a massive hitter. Like, basically just trucks everybody with one shot if they can. 20 to 22 damage is a lot of damage for this game from what I've seen so far. I'm going to go with the Atlas, I guess. Maybe it's just my nostalgia for Mech Warrior and it's called an Atlas, but you know what? I got to do it, man. We got to have that 100-ton massive hunk of steel rolling through, scaring everybody off. Uh, let's start the game up and see what we got going here. Definitely liking sort of the, the retro-futuristic play that they've got going on here, uh, where it's like semi-ASCII almost. It's not really even ASCII, it just reminds me of the old screens from like Apple IIe's and Commodore's and whatnot, where it's got kind of like the trace lines on it. Uh, so what do we have going on here? we got to select our next mission. Uh, each mission is going to come with a bonus that's going to give us something. Uh, if we end up with a lot of matter, we can level up our units and we can add new stuff to them, or we can fabricate new weapons to kind of move their builds in directions that we see being helpful. Uh, we've got a mission to destroy the fabricators right here. We've also got a mission to repel the assault. That'll give us a Horus missile, I guess, which I, it looks like it actually has like a splash radius too. So I guess that's an AOE weapon. We have an overclocking module right here, which means that while heat is above 40, we'll add seven minimum damage to all weapons. Uh, this is the kind of thing that would be really, really good on the Atlas, I think. Yeah, let's destroy the maintenance station. I bet we can do that. We can check our squad loadout, too, just to make sure everybody's in a position that we want them to be. Uh, you can buy stuff right at the beginning. We start out with 150 matter, so it's altogether possible that you could come in right here and you could buy upgrades with your matter, or you could fabricate new weapons if you're not a giant fan of the weapons that these guys are going to be rocking. It really comes down to whatever makes you comfortable and what you want to play around with. I do like the idea of adding armored plating to one of these guys, but I do need him to be able to move, too. 
Uh, we've got an adapted sensor, so it'll give you more crit chance, more crit damage. Uh, we would want to use that on, like, whoever it was that had the auto cannon. So, yeah, that would be this guy right here. We go back up to the Brigandine. How much is this going to cost right here? So for a level 1 upgrade, they're repaired for free after every combat. All weapons applies to armor breach upon dealing damage. That also be an important one because this guy doesn't hit that hard. Minus 5 heat applied at the end of the turn. So he loses 15 heat per turn instead of 10 heat per turn. So that's also a really, really nice bonus. It kind of depends what you want to do. Oh, I guess that commits. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, I mean, at least we got one of the ones that was good. I was gonna, I was clicking on that to see, since it was differently colored, I wanted to see if it had a pop-up that told me exactly what armor breach was, but I guess not. We spent our matter on that right there, which is a decent ability, so there's not really that much to be upset about. It is kind of a bummer, though, that it doesn't have a pop-up or, like, a confirm on that uh, to, like, be like, are you sure you want to purchase this upgrade? And you go, yes. Uh, because I was clicking to see if I could get that to pop up and tell me exactly what that status effect does. Just a little observation. Uh, let's go back. We've already got that done. Before I make any more mistakes and use up all of my resources, let's go ahead and start this mission off. Let's see if we can destroy some enemy robots here. All right, so we've got to destroy infected maintenance objects. And then we've also got the opponent's squad will awaken very, very shortly. Then in 10 turns, enemy reinforcements will show up. All right. Uh, let's take the atlas out. we got one door up here. So we're going to take each of these guys, and we're just going to kind of move it along. There we go. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, you could double up and move a little further if you want. I don't think it's going to be too crazy. And that guy right there, he's an Orion. He's got 60 hull. He's looking pretty tough, actually. This guy over here is an armored, spi an armored spider, I guess. I had a hiccup right there for some reason. I don't exactly know why that happens. But every now and again while I'm doing commentary, I just get a hiccup. Just one hiccup. It doesn't give me an entire set of hiccups. It's just one hiccup and then it's gone and it never happens again. No clue why it occurs. It's happened ever since I started on the internet and it's something I've always puzzled about. Uh, we've got a couple of guys in here. So we've got a we've got a beefy fight in front of us if these guys decide to square up. Let's take a second. I don't know if they're going to push on in. Uh, I got my paladin right here. How far into the room can everybody else get? You can only get to there. You can get to there. Okay. You move up to there. These guys are now aware of us. Uh, I don't exactly know what the object is that I'm trying to kill. There is some object around here, like a maintenance station or something. Ah, that's probably it right there. There's an armored spider and a fabricator. All right, well, we'll move in that direction. It's lit up, and we don't have any fog of war over there, so I'm assuming it's the right choice. Uh, we can attack right over here with the ray gun, and I do think it's a good idea. There we go. So we ray gun that guy. He has lost a huge chunk of his hull. Uh, this guy is a repair bot, so I'm just going to kind of move him over to there. I don't want him to get too crazy. Broadsword is inside a firing range right here, so I'm going to move him up. And there we go. Our first enemy is dead. One thing that you'll notice about this game that's really, really cool is that even though the graphics are fairly simple and sort of like retro, uh, I really, really like, you can see the sophistication and you can sort of see that it's actually got like advanced ideas in pixel art. Like when you kill the enemies, it's got this really cool sort of like consuming undulating flame when the enemy dies that makes you realize that like the developers definitely know what they're doing with pixel art. It's just, am I one slot out of range right now? Oh no, I'm in range. Nice. Yeah. Nail him up then. Get a little bit more damage off. Uh, that's going to be our entire turn. We'll wait and see what this guy does. I didn't check and see what his weapon was. Uh, it looks like he zapped us and then he ran for it. That's kind of a cowardly play. Don't really respect it altogether that much, but you know what? He's probably about to die anyway, so he did five to seven damage with his spider laser. Spider las, spider las, sneaks and shoots you in the ass. Uh, let's see here. We'll go over here and then bow. There it is. Oh, we didn't kill him, dude. I was really, really hoping we would kill this guy. But I think he's going to outrun us. All right, we'll move the squad forward. As long as we're advancing, I'm not in too bad of a mood. I just want to go sort of like towards the objective while we play. Uh, we're going to take a little bit more of a scuffing right here. Wish that we weren't. Oh, he actually just ran for it. I guess he's trying to regroup with everybody else. What's going on down here? We got another Orion right there. Okay, when we breach on through the door, I'm sure it'll be okay. Uh, there's a repair station over here. What does it do? Uh, there is a repair kit that will repair 35 a hull. All right. So I guess that's maybe just an item that I can pick up. It's a station. 
I wonder how I activate that. That's pretty cool. And we got a fabricator over here that looks like it manufactures equipment. That makes sense, considering it's called a fabricator. Uh, let's go over here. Either that or it likes to lie a lot. It could be one of the two things, but I'd like to err on the side of just giving it the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, this critter produces something productive, all right? It's not a liar. It's a wonderful little robot that does all the things that I need him to do. Oh, it's producing more robots. Interesting. Okay, so we need to get over there and kill that. I, I was going to hang out right here until we found that out, and I was just going to kind of like wait for these guys to close with me. But now that I know that's no longer an option, I really don't want to give them the first turn, though. I don't want to give them the opening shot. I really don't. We're just going to wait right here. Let's see what they do. If they stop pushing towards us and it starts to strike me as though... Oh, wow. He was able to shoot from a long ways away. What was that? A flamethrower? I don't know what that was that he shot at me. The Orion weapon. It puts two plasma residue upon dealing damage. Okay. That's a problem. It's definitely not good. We got 100 heat to play around with, so we'll still be in okay shape, I think. Uh, I would like for you to be right there with your broadsword. Mm -hmm. Break out your broadsword. Wonder boy. I'm going to kind of like push in on these guys, I guess. If you want to go to right there, I'm not going to argue with you. There you go, there you go, there you go. All right, and then repair bot, you move up. And, like, I guess if you want to fire the needler or whatever it is at that guy, like, go for it. So we shot him with a needler twice. What does the needler do again? Uh, it does one internal damage. So this guy is actually going to start getting baked pretty good. Yeah, I was going to say, if you see that red mark right there on his HP up at the top of the screen. So we got kind of a busy UI right now. Maybe I should run through that. Uh, I've gotten bad at my job over the years. Uh, let's see here. We've got our units on the left. we got the amount of AP that they have available. They have their hull. They have their heat. They have their movement allotment, whether or not it's basically a binary number determining whether or not they have used their movement for the turn. On this side, anytime you click on a unit, it's going to give you a readout of what their stats are. So we've got AP. We've got hull. We've got armor, heat. Basically the same stuff that's being portrayed over here. It's just we can do it to our enemies as well, and we can see what kind of weapons they have. I, I probably should have gone through that a little bit quicker, but like, eh, you know, I forgot to do it. Yeah, sometimes you forget to do the things you're supposed to do. Uh, we really, really sincerely, you need to stop shooting plasma at me, dude. You shoot plasma at me one more time, and I'm going to start thinking that maybe we aren't such great friends. That dude's running for it. We do need to take care of this fabricator down here, though. I'm a little bit worried that he's just going to hang out in the backfield and mess with me. So I'm going to smack him so that the internal damage kills him on the next turn. Uh, we can't hold an overwatch, as far as I know, which is kind of a bummer, because I would very much like to hold an overwatch over here. Uh, whoever's wounded the most... Let's just sort of hang tight for a second, let the heat dissipate. Oh, they zapped a hole in the wall. Alright, so apparently the environments are destructible. I should have known that from right there. Uh, you could sort of tell a little bit that they were going to be destructible, but... I can hit from right there. We'll then go ahead and do it, amigo. Hit him with that old ambush. And we got him down to 22 HP. You're not in firing range from right there, are you? All right, so we'll do firing range from right there. We got a lot of shooting to do here, though, which is really sort of concerning. Uh, we'll go ahead and shoot and kill him. I'm going to bring you up. And then we have a repair kit over here. Are you wounded? Yeah, dude. Uh, get a little tune-up real fast. Anybody that's got HP missing. It's got a two-turn cooldown, so we might as well use him to be as annoying as possible and just, like, chain heal all of our units back up to full. That thing is producing mad units over there. Like, it's producing, like, a unit per turn. So we're going to have to figure out something to do to get rid of it. Uh, this dude is probably going to have to just, like, hang back and let his heat dissipate for a second. He's getting pretty... He's getting pretty toasty, probably due to the fact that he got shot with that plasma thrower. Which is kind of an asshole weapon in this game. That plasma thrower gets you into trouble. Uh, let's go ahead and move the repair bot up. 
I mean, if you got movement left, I guess we can keep advancing. They're probably going to push down this way. We've only got to deal with two of these guys, and they don't hit that hard. So we should be able to get rid of this fabricator at some point, I hope. All right, so you got the ray gun. I'm going to have you swing out to here, fire right there. That's going to put him down to 19 HP. There you go. And now he's wiped out. I'm going to push forward very, very aggressively because I'm trying to, like, mind this gap that we've got in between all of us. Uh, he's now cooled down so we can move him forward as much as he wants to. He's also got a crazy amount of movement just due to the fact that he's a melee unit with that bio steel frame right there. So he's speedy. He's like a Warframe character. He moves real, real fast. You know what I tried out this morning? I tried chocolate checks for the first time today. It's pretty good, man. Chocolate checks was pretty on point. Like, I've never had chocolate checks before, but chocolate checks is kind of a sleeper hit, dude. It's kind of a banger. Like, I tasted it, and I was like, man, this is a pretty solid cereal right here. Like, I would say that it's not, like, S-tier, but it is a pretty good cereal. Yeah, let's go and wipe that guy out. And now that he's down... Oh, if you swing, though, you can't take a second movement. All right. I'm, I'm trying to get some of these dudes' heat. Like, his heat is just absolutely terrible right now. He's got 70 out of 100 heat. So I need him to dissipate faster. I think in future playthroughs, I'll focus on heat distribution a little bit more. Opposing unit count has been incremented. Oh, that's not good. I'm not super positive why he's not taking damage. I'm a little confused about it. However, we have an opportunity over here to maybe like kill off some of this stuff. So let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to move up over here. Your heat is at what? 45? Alright. Oh, he already attacked. Okay. I don't know why that guy didn't take damage when I was shooting him. I don't see any indicator. Maybe he's teleporting in. Maybe that's what it is. Like they're in the process of teleporting. I think that's what it was. I think they were like phasing into existence or something. All right, so you kill the fabricator real fast. That'll die on next turn. We'll get him with the needler. Eh, you're looking okay. Bring you down over here and just start eliminating some of these robots. Ooh, he's still not dead, huh? And my heat is absurd, dude. Like, I just cannot get rid of heat on this guy. I'm going to get rid of that armored plating, and I think I'm going to give him some kind of, like, heat sink or something. Oh, we just got to finish these guys off now, and then we're good to go. I am very, very happy to hear... Ow, my paladin got smacked, dude. How is my paladin that low on HP? Yikes, my paladin got buried. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and kill him with the ray gun. And then you've got a little bit of heat left. Hopefully it's enough. Alright, so there's one enemy left. You move over to here, and then you've already used your action. Let's go ahead and end the turn. I'm just going to chillax for a second and let that thing come to me. I need to repair this dude's hull like today. Oh, never mind. He made it all the way into the room already. What a little bastard. He made it all the way up. What a little psycho. Yeah, you get some hull back. Oof, your heat is brutal. There we go. Mission completed. So now we're going to get ourselves some resources that we can spend to make things a little bit better. We've also got an overclocking module, so that's great. Uh, I would probably throw that. I would more than likely throw that on what's his name, the guy that has the Gatling gun, the auto cannon that keeps overheating. Now we've got destroy the fabricators over here. That'll give us a razor. Okay, so that does 30 to 40 damage. Deals 5 damage to us every time we fire it. But it is reduced by armor, which means that our character that has the plus 6 to armor could use that without damaging himself. Uh, effectively making it so that he hits like way, way, way harder. I like that idea. Let's take a look at our squad though real fast and we'll start pondering what we want to do with some of this matter. We've got an acid splasher over here. It puts five corrosion on there. It generates a lot of heat though. We got liquid cooling on this side. 
It's very, very nice. I don't know how many things you can fit in here. It looks like you can fit a couple. Okay. All right. So we got options. Uh, I'm going to get the liquid cooling. Yeah, let me get a liquid cooling real fast. This guy right here. So we've got the overclocking module. This dude's heat is almost always above 40 because his gun generates a ton of heat. So we'll do that. That'll make him a little bit more effective because with this overclocking module, seven minimum damage. Seven min, seven max. So that'll raise that to a 14 to 16 times three, which means he's going to be like straight dropping deuces on kids once we get in there. Uh, we've got the mechanic over here. Doesn't really need a whole lot on the mechanic. I think we're good there. Oh, we've got the paladin. I, I feel like the atlas is probably the best thing to liquid cool because this is the other unit that was having a lot of problems with heat dissipation. I don't need to like repair these guys, do I? They like automatically repair after the mission, correct? I really, really hope so. Uh, I want this razor right here, so we're gonna do this mission. Oh, we gotta destroy some fabricators. Let's get moving. We don't know exactly where they're gonna be. A virus signature has been detected in the fabricator's firmware. Disposal is the only option until the purge algorithm is discovered. Okay, so this thing could be really kind of anywhere. Oh, nice, there's a cooler right there. So there's actually like environmental effects too, kind of Disgaea style. There's little tiles that do certain things if you end on them. Uh, we're gonna split people up a bit. We're gonna send them out on the buddy system to find this fabricator. I'm gonna say somebody here has a double move. I don't see anything inside that room right there. Okay, there's our first fabricator, so we know where the first one is. Now we just gotta find the second one, which could be, like, anywhere. Uh, I don't see a fabricator in this room. So there's no fabricator inside of there. We do have a door on the left on this side. Uh, he should be able to get back and regroup with this dude pretty rapidly. Meanwhile, you two go over here. I'm splitting the party right now. I know it's a mistake, and I'm still doing it anyways. You two go over there and handle that fabricator. We've got another turn or so until the enemy goes active. Never mind, apparently the enemy's active right now, and he's feeling like a big old giant goofy meanie face. Aw, oh, dude, the other fabricator's down there. Okay, uh, we gotta regroup everybody. Everybody regroup. You've got big boy movement, so you come down here and big boy move back to your family. There you go. Big boy move back to your home. I was gonna say, I can get rid of the spider on this turn, I think. And then... We can put some uh, internal damage on that thing so that it starts whittling away at its own health. These two will stop the scorpion that's coming through this way. Or maybe we'll just regroup everybody over here. I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. It's such a good game to look at. Like, it's a busy game with a lot going on on screen. But at the same time, it's like really kind of a retro pleasure to look at. I like it a lot. I know that it won't be everybody's cup of tea, but it's definitely mine. Uh, let's move on over here take care of business on that fabricator. There's only one left. Uh, we're going to have them both fall back this way about as hard as they can, I think. Yeah, go ahead and heal yourself. We'll bring you back over this way. Hopefully this guy can outrun the enemy, because uh, there's a couple of bad dudes coming. All right, you come down here. Fire at the scorpion. Scorpion's got 18 HP left. Not going to be able to get you over there, but I will take you and put you behind the wall so that you don't eat a hit on the next turn. Oh, he only wants you. Never mind then. Uh, with you guys, yeah, you guys just run. Run the best you can for the moment. I know it's not like super honorable, and it's not a good look to always be running, but I can make an exception in this case. Uh, Paladin still has movement. That's good because I need the Paladin. I need the Paladin to move. So you know those things come together pretty well. Needing movement and having movement. I'm gonna take a rough guess and say, are they like fighting each other? I think they might be fighting each other. I think we may have some kind of civil war type thing going on. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna move you up. Smack that guy. Right, so now we've got a straight shot to this fab down here. 
and we're gonna do it in just a second. Actually, next turn we should be able to eke out the win. Uh, I think these reinforcements right here were a little bit too far back to actually be of help. Maybe they're just shooting their way through walls. I think they might just be destroying the environment for whatever reason. All right, so you guys come down here. Get that fabricator. There we go. Uh, so now we just got to destroy the remainder of the enemy units, and we can do that pretty easily from a choke point over here. All right, so I, let, I gave them a turn or two to really kind of close the gap with me. So here they come. We got three up at the top, a couple of scorpions, a weird little, like, muscle flexy guy, which I like the way they put nipples on the robot right there. That's always a good call. I I'd like to think that in a universe where robots have nipples, I would probably be in my happiest timeline. I don't know if he can close that or not. It looks like he can, but I feel like he's gonna get like, I feel like he's gonna get starched on the next turn. Oh, he's also got HP missing. Okay. Uh, yeah, throw some heals on him real fast. I gotta feel, he's gonna get dookied on, I think. Like, I think these two, or at least one of them, is gonna be able to get inside a range. Both of them are gonna be able to, so yeah, he's gonna... He's gonna kinda get trucked a little bit right here. Like, that's okay. Because I'm of the opinion that I think we can mash through this. Yeah, destroy the wall right there so that we got a little extra gap to kind of maneuver next turn. I think we should be good. They didn't hit him that hard, and we, we'll be able to heal him on the next turn. Uh, I don't think they're going to priority target him either. They're probably going to go for the person that has, like, the heaviest hitting weapon is what it looks like the AI does. So I can live with that anyways. Uh, you move back over here. Give me a heal right there. You fire right there. His auto cannon is doing 14 to 16 times 3, dude. If you can get him spun up, I think we just made a very, very good tactical decision uh, as far as his equipment goes because he's hitting pretty hard now. Uh, keep the Paladin moving forward. There's another one down. We got one enemy left. That's the Turnerino. This guy will probably push up. Oh, no, he didn't. He shot and he ran? Oh, that's going to be annoying. Don't like that. Okay. We're going to have to kind of, like, ambush this guy, I think. Otherwise, I don't think he's going to, like, try to fight us. Yeah, it looks like he's got some kind of, like, skirmishing protocol. So he kind of, like, dances in, hits you, then dances out. Big hit right there. Flank around this side, and boom. It worked. Mission accomplished. So anyways, this is Mainframe Defenders. I hope you guys liked it thus far. If you're looking for a squad-based sandbox strategy game... Uh, that's got a very, very cool aesthetic. Lots of customizable weaponry and things you can add to your characters. Uh, and just kind of a play-at-your-own-pace attitude. This might be one of the games that you definitely want to check out. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So anyways, get the game down below in the description. If you like the video, make sure you check out the Discord. Make sure you check out the Twitch stream. Those are both listed down below. Uh, on top of that, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for being here. Goodbye, everybody, and hope you have a pleasant day.